Hi guys, it's Izzy and in today's video I'm going to be doing a book haul. If you can hear a bit of background noise it's because my fan is on, because it's a ningle and heat wave and my body doesn't function well at normal temperature, let alone in the heat, let me tell you that. But I am going to be doing a book haul because I have recently received um, too many books. So it's a problem, um, and I'm going to share them with you today. Most of these I've been lucky enough uh, to have sent from the publishers, and some of them were pre-orders, and we've got a whole range. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can because I don't want to make this video too long, as I have made several very long videos in a row, so I'm going to try and make this one quick. But have I ever done that? No. Also, just want to say, like, a huge, insane, like, I still can't process that I have a thousand subscribers. Like, it is literally no words. I did write a little thing on Twitter, if you follow me there. I did say um, a massive thank you, and I just want to reiterate that here, because I... I I can't conceptualise a thousand people, that's just, it's just too much for my brain, like how, how do I have a thousand people who want to watch me? I digress. Anyway, we're going to start with book haul, thank you for a thousand, I'm going to need about two months to process this because I never thought this would happen in a million years. I'm having a, I'm having a crisis. Anyway, let's get started. Um, not doing this in order of how I received them because I can't remember and um, that's going to take too much effort so we're just going to go in random order but first thing I'm going to talk about is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. Hodder and Stoughton kindly sent this to me. This is a finished copy and I've actually read this book. I just posted my Goodreads review so if you want to check that out you can and I loved this book at 4.5 stars. It basically follows um, three perspectives of Leto, Hero and First Sister and basically First Sister in this sci-fi world is part of this like religion where they take women's voices and they basically become like confessionals and so they can't share their secrets because they can't talk and Leto is a soldier who has been a partner with Hero for like their whole lives and he and in a battle Hero has gone missing and Leto is sent to find and kill them because they have betrayed their cause and this story is about them, their journeys colliding and it's insane, it's so fast paced, it's so good, I love it so much. Hero is non-binary which is super cool and First Sister is sapphic and yeah I just loved this book so much. I gave it 4.5 stars. I won't be giving a review of most of these because I haven't read them but this one was superb. Codron and Stoughton also kindly sent me a copy of The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson I think. I'm not sure if it's Michelle or Michaela. Uh, this is a YA sci-fi, first sister if I didn't say was adult sci-fi. And this is a book where they've discovered the multiverse. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically a, the idea that there are infinite worlds that vibrate at different frequencies. So they take up the same space as our world, but they vibrate at different frequencies and therefore they are just like overlap. It's really interesting, look into it if you're interested in just the concept of that overall, but in this book they've discovered that that is a real thing and you can't travel to worlds where your doppelganger is still alive, but there's this one girl who's, like they've discovered 300 worlds and like on all but eight of them she's died and so she gets sent to all these worlds but then I think I think that there's a mystery that someone is trying to kill all of them, I think. I'm not sure, haven't read it yet, but I think that's what it's about. Uh, and they also kindly sent me a finished copy of The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune. I have read this book, I read an e arc of it, and I'm so happy to have a copy because I really did love this book. It's a contemporary sci-fi book about a boy called Nick 
who has ADHD and is in love with his best friend, what's his name, Seth? I think his name is Seth. Um, and he wants to become a superhero to prove that he's special and yeah, it's about superheroes and being yourself and loving who you are and accepting who you are and knowing that everyone is special. Oh, I just loved it. It was so good. Um, you can read my review of it in on Goodreads or read one of my wrap-ups. I think I read it in May or June. Can't remember. But you can watch that, I guess. <laughs> and I then got a copy of Dangerous Remedy by Kat Dunn. This one I did actually buy because I wanted the, like, can I find the page? Yes, the signed edition. It says heads will roll. Everyone knows that I'm obsessed with this book. It's like my brand now. Obviously, it's not The Diviners, but, like, I do love it. Uh, it's one of my favourite books of the year, and this is a book set in 1700s uh, France during the French Revolution and follows four main characters who will jailbreak anyone from uh, prison, but on one jailbreak mission, they jailbreak this girl who turns out to have magic powers that could... Uh, change the outcome of the Revolutionary War and they have to keep her safe and figure out how to um, keep her out of the hands of either side of the war. Super queer, super fun, super um, engaging, it's got like heist, it's got like so much action, it's so incredible. It is out in, in hardback now, it was previously just out in ebook but it's now available in hardback and I highly suggest you pick it up and also it's just like a beautiful book like and it also has these like cool yellow map bits in it and I just adore it. It's just a masterpiece, I love it so much. Another book that I pre-ordered was Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. I got this yesterday. I got the signed copy of it. I now have four books signed by Alice Oseman. I have a problem. I can't help it. But this is a novella uh, from Solitaire and also Heartstopper. It follows Nick and Charlie from Heartstopper. And yeah, it's just a cute novella about them. And it does have some like pictures in it. And yeah, I just really wanted a physical copy and I can't wait to read this. It's super short and I just love Nick and Charlie so much and I just want to spend all my days with them. Uh, the next book I got was The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. This was my first book that I received from a six month subscription where you get like a personalised book each month so um, you like fill out a questionnaire to describe your taste and then each month um, someone from someone from this company will choose a book that they think you'll like and send it to you and my wonderful bookish friends got me this for my birthday a six month subscription and this is the first one and I'm so excited to read it it's a historical fiction book that sounds just like incredible and also the book itself is stunning it's got like this little octopus on it I just like and it's like one of those things where like the watch is inside it's such a cool book but I'm just gonna read you the blurb because it just sounds so good it says in 1883 Daniel Stapleton returns to his tiny flat to find a gold pocket watch on his pillow when the watch saves Daniel's life from a blast that destroys Scotland Yard he goes in search of its maker, Kita Mori, a kind, lovely Japanese immigrant. Meanwhile, Grace Caro is sneaking into an Oxford library, desperate, desperate to prove the existence of the lumin, the lumin, the luminiferous ether before her mother can force her to marry. As the lives of these three characters become entwined, events spiral out of control until Daniel is torn between loyalty's futures and opposing geniuses. I'm in. It kind of gives me like Night Circus vibes which is super exciting and I love historical fiction and I love a like mystery so I'm super excited to read that book. Next from Holiday House I was sent Forget This Ever Happened by Cassandra Rose Clark. This is a young adult contemporary sci-fi about this girl called Claire and it takes place in 1993 in Texas in this town that sometimes disappears 
and basically when you're there you learn this secret about this town and if you leave you forget the town even exists and, and the secret of this town and so it follows Claire as she has to like save the town or the world or something it's also queer there's a female female romance and i think it also talks about her like looking after her grandma and stuff i'm super excited for this it sounds so intriguing i can't wait to read it it's going to be my next read probably it comes out september 1st and i'm so excited and also just such a cool cover i'm looking forward to the 1993 like time um and I'm just super excited to read it. It just is so intriguing, like a town that's sometimes there and sometimes isn't and has this dark secret, like I'm in. From Philomel, I got sent The Shadow War by Lindsay Smith, which sounds like my perfect book. Like I'm so hyped for it. Again, I'm just gonna read you the blurb because it just describes it like so well that I just don't think I can do it justice by like explaining it to you. It says, World War II is raging and five teens are looking to make a mark. Daniel and Rebecca seek revenge against the Nazis who slaughtered their family. Simone is determined to fight back against the oppressors who ruined her life and corrupted her girlfriend. Queer. Uh, Philip aims to prove that he's better than his worst mistakes and Liam is searching for a way to control the portal to the shadow world he's uncovered and the monsters that live within it before the Nazi regime can do the same. When the five meet... Excuse me, Wilbur, I'm trying to read. When the five meet and grudgingly team up in the forests of Germany, none of them knows what their future might hold. As they race against time, war and enemies from both this world and another, Liam, Daniel, Rebecca, Philip and Simone know that they all can count on is their own determination and will to survive. With their world turned upside down and the shadow realm looming ominously large and threateningly close, the course of history and the very fate of humanity rest in their hands. Still, the most important question remains, will they be able to save it? In this dark and thrilling tale of power, shadow and revenge, some prices must be paid in blood. We all know my favourite series in the entire world is The Diviners and I would literally die for it. Giving me Diviners vibes. I'm just saying... I've never been more excited. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I'm so thrilled to have an arc of this book. I can't wait to read it. It comes out in October. I can't remember exactly when. I want to say like the 14th or something. Where does it, does it say? 13th of October. There you go. I'm so hyped to read this and I'm sad that there are other books I need to read before this because like I'm so ready but I don't want to have my expectations too high and be disappointed so <gasps> I'm excited though. <laughs> Next book I was sent by Source Books, and that is Even If We Break by Mariaki Nishkamp. This is a thriller, this is a YA thriller that revolves around a game, which I'm so excited for because that's like one of my favourite things ever. It just says, five friends go to a cabin, four of them are hiding secrets, three years of history binds them, two are doomed from the start, one person wants to end this, no one is safe. Are you ready to play? Like, I'm sorry. Did you say the best thriller ever? I also know Mariaki Nishkamp is a disabled author, which is super cool. And I'm not entirely sure if there's disabled characters in it. But if there is, your girl is hyped. And yeah, uh, Mariaki Nishkamp also wrote a really cool graphic novel, which was called Oracle Code. And if you're looking to read something that has a bunch of disabled characters in it, I would highly recommend picking that up. It's so good. And like everyone's disabled is the best. The lovely Amber from Bookish Sappho, I'll leave her Twitter handle on the screen or down below, whichever I remember to do. Uh, we traded arcs and I got Middle Game by Shannon Maguire. This is a book I've been wanting to read for so long, but it's so ridiculously expensive in the UK. But like it's for the hardback, it's like £18 or something. And um, I'm not that rich. And so when I was able to trade for this arc, I was so excited. This is just something I've been looking to read for so long. Um, and I've heard it's like the weirdest book ever and like you should go in like not really knowing anything. I know Kayla from Books and Lala adores this book and we 
generally have pretty similar tastes, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. Uh, I just know it's an adult fantasy that follows two twins who I believe want to make themselves into gods, and the names are Roger and Dodger. I'm in. Like, I just don't even want to read the blurb because I just want to go into this book and just like have my mind blown. So you're also not getting a good description. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the lovely Amy sent me a arc of Camp by Lev A. C. Rosen. I read an e arc of this and I absolutely adore it. It's a, one of my favourite books of the year. It's like five stars and I'm so happy to have a physical copy of it because I literally just adore this book and also like I love how queer this cover is. It says top or bottom it's time to bunk up. Hello this is my face. Excuse me. Look at my beautiful face please, thank you. Um, and this is a super queer book that follows a boy called Randy who every summer goes to this summer camp for queer kids and teenagers and it follows him as he tries to change himself to um, attract this boy and it's all about loving yourself respectability politics in the queer community, um, stereotypes and, and being yourself and friendship and it just really celebrates being queer and it's just such a great book. Again you can read my Goodreads review or watch my June wrap up where I talked about it a lot. I don't want to go on and on but this was fantastic and I'm so happy to have a copy of it. The lovely Titan Books sent me a finished copy of The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman. It's got really cool sprayed edges, I love it. This is the second and final book in the Devouring Grey duology. I know that quite a lot of people didn't like the Devouring Grey but I actually personally really enjoyed it and I loved the Deck of Omens too, it was such a great um, ending to the duology, it was really satisfying. I gave both the books four stars. It's about this town called Four Paths and a new girl uh, moves in called Violet and basically each family, each founder family has a different magical ritual and different magical powers and they've trapped this thing called the Devouring Grey in the middle of Four Paths and basically it's killing people, they're trying to take it down. It's really cool, really spooky really engaging like every character is like bisexual it's just it's a good time and I think if you go in with reasonable expectations you'll have a good time I love the atmosphere of these books it's so so good from Razorbill I was sent The Valley and the Flood by Rebecca Mahoney this comes out in October I think the 1st of October I want to say oh I'm so bad with dates um, but this is a book that talks about PTSD and as that's something I suffer from I was really really intrigued to read this book and I'm super excited to see that explored in a young adult novel. Um, the back says, Welcome to Lotus Valley, Nevada. This little desert town attracts all kinds of curious characters. A cook whose food tastes just like home, a boy who can see the creature that likes to say hidden, a prophet who knows how the story ends, a girl whose most painful memories are finally catching up to her, and in its darkest corners lie secrets that are probably best kept in the shadows. So come visit, stay for a while, but be warned you could get swept away. And look at this stunning cover. So it's kind of a book that has magical realism but talks about mental health issues, which I think is so good. A uh, book I love, Black Girl Unlimited, is another book that is part memoir, part magical realism, and it talks in depth about mental health issues, but using like magical realism, and it was incredible, and I'm really hoping this book does the same, so I'm really excited for it. From HMH Teens, I got Under Shifting Stars by Alexandra Latos. This comes out in September, and this is a contemporary book with a female female romance that's mainly what I know about it uh, but the blurb says Audrey and Claire may be twins but they don't share a school a room a star sign or even a birthday ever since their bro brother Adam's death all they've shared is confusion over who they are and what comes next Audrey tired of being seen as different from her neurotypical peers is determined to convince her parents and psychologist that she's ready to leave her alternative program and return to public school with Claire she doesn't realise that her twin's popular status there is crumb crumbling. 
Claire is grappling with not only grief but also her gender fluidity and has begun questioning old friendships, dressing in Adam's clothes and wondering what emerging feelings for a non-binary classmate Taylor might mean. Will first crushes, new family dynamics and questions of identity prove that Audrey and Claire have grown too different to understand each other or that they've needed each other all along? So it basically just follows two twins who are struggling with their identity and learning who they are and about whether they, you know, they can become friends again or whether they've grown too far apart and I'm super excited to read it. And the final book which I've also read is Heartbreak Boys by Simon James Green. This was sent to me by Scholastic and this was such a fabulous book. It's about two boys Jack and Nate who begrudgingly go on a road trip together after their boyfriends have cheated on them with each other. So Jack and Nate's boyfriends <gasps> cheated on them with each other which did not go down well um, and they sort of create this Instagram with like a highlights reel to prove that they're like better off without them and that they're fine even though they're like heartbroken and it's just such a funny, it's British and it has such great British humour it's so real and authentic and I loved Jack and Nate's characters. I loved how queer it was, I loved how funny it was. Again, I wrote a long Goodreads review, you can check that out down below. But this is out now, it came out August 5th I want to say. Um, and I highly recommend you pick it up. It was so much fun and it's like the perfect summer contemporary read. It's not too heavy and it was just so much fun. So yes, those are all the many, many books that I've bought and received and don't have enough space for, but I'm so thankful to everyone who sent me any of these books. I'm so lucky and privileged to be in this position um, and yeah, I hope some of these sound interesting to you, maybe you'll want to pick them up and of course I once I read them I will be talking them I will be talking about them in my wrap ups as usual. But yes, um, if you want to subscribe, like this video, comment down below that you recently bought or received. And yeah, follow me on Goodreads, Twitter, Instagram, all in the links below. And, and yeah, I will leave you in peace now. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.